In this video, we show you how to do Node.js with MongoDB. We are going to create a document and the most important part of the video is how to secure the system so it doesn't crash fully if something goes wrong. To get started with this, obviously you have watched video number one or else look at the video description underneath. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to open VS Code I have this code open here already. Uh, go to any file you want, anywhere in the system. I will do this with you so you can see the whole thing taking place. I will open a folder and select any folder you want or create a new folder. In my case, I'm going to go to no projects and I'm going to build a whole new folder. I will call it node-mongo-prod so I can do the create, read, update, and delete in this folder. Let's select the folder and we have it ready. <clears throat> so a few things we need here is we need the package.json, which is the main folder, which is the main file that tells us what to install in the system. Over here, let's just create a couple of dependencies that will allow us to install what we need to do Node.js and Mongo. So let's create a key called dependencies. I'm using auto completion here. And we are going to install right away MongoDB. And this is coming from the NPM packages. I will show you how I get to this. And right now I'm trying to load version 3.5.5. So I will save it. And just for you to know how I got to this part here, if you just do npm mongodb, you will find a lot of npms. In this case, I'm using mongodb and the version is 3.5. There is 1.6 million downloads weekly. So that's a reliable package. You could read all the info about it, there's a tutorial on how to connect and how to do stuff with the database, but it doesn't really show you what I want to show you. Yeah, obviously it shows you the crate with Mongo, but I want to show you a couple of tricks that you should know. So let's go back to VS Code and we need to install this package. So in my computer, I'm going to go to the terminal. You can just go to tools and find the terminal. I have the shortcut here or else you go to view, let's see, terminal. That's my control and the weird letter. That's the shortcut. So once you have found the terminal, try to do this npm install. And at the moment it's going to do something and it's going to install the packages dependencies that I have here. So if I show you what I have now in my Explorer, File Explorer, you can see that the no modules have been installed and that's because I told it to install Mongo. So eventually you will find a lot of stuff here and there's the MongoDB, that's this one there. So that's what NPM does and let me just do this. All right. So NPM is running, and now we're going to try to create a very simple Node.js CRUD application, in this case for reading. So let's create a new file, and let's call it read.js. It's just going to do, I'm sorry, we're going to insert actually. Rename, that will be the create, so we can create documents. We don't need this package.json anymore. And in the crate, we are going to just do console.log. And we're going to log the letter X. We save it. And if you want to run this crate.js, what you do is you write node crate.js. And you can do this as many times as you want every time you make a change to the file. So if I want to log A and log B again, save it. And then when I want to test it, I need to run the no create.js command again. So this is really, really annoying when you're working with a big project, and most of you will. So I suggest that you install a package called Nodemon. And Nodemon will allow you guys to run the node command every time 
you save. So if I save now this file, node will run and that's happening via the nodemon package. So if I do nodemon and click enter, you can see that I have an issue here. It says that nodemon is not recognized because I have not installed it. So what we will do is we're going to install it. We're going to say npm install nodemon. Before you run it, if you are in a Mac computer, probably you need to do sudo npm install nodemon. And sometimes you need the flag G for global. I will install it with the flag G and hopefully I can trigger some errors that I have seen before so I can fix it with you guys. So for now, what we're going to do is just hit enter and this will install Nodemon for us. It takes a little bit of time. There are not really any errors. And now if we do Nodemon, let's try to see if we can see the version of it. It failed. Let's see if I do just Nodemon. It failed again. So I'm getting the issue that says, let me just read it for you guys. The term Nomon is not recognized. So it doesn't understand what I just installed. Let me try to install it again. I don't think this space had nothing, nothing to do with it. No way. Let's just see. All right, let's do Nodemon. And in some of your computers, it will be working. It's not in my machine. So what I will do is I'm going to try to install it without the G flag. I will just do like, that, like so. I'm trying to tr trigger as many errors I can possibly imagine because every computer is different. So hopefully one of the solutions will do. Now you can see that I don't have the permissions to access if I just do nodemon like I did here with install nodemon. So that's not running. So let's do something else. Let's open a terminal, just the command prompt. And once you have it open, let's do something else. Let's try to do npm dash dash version. And this gives me version 6.13.4. I'm going to try to install Nodemon now. npm install Nodemon. I should get something like I did via the terminal in VS Code. Let's see. All right, this actually worked. It gives me warnings. Let's see if I do Nodemon now. So Nodemon is now understood. So if I say Nodemon dash dash version, I have version 202. So you guys see that something really strange happened when I use the terminal and when I use the command prompt. So at the moment, the command prompt is running fine. So what I will do is I will close the terminal and via the command prompt, just to test that it's fully working, I am going to run the Nodemon command inside or pointing to this file create.js. So to do that, I will say CD and then I will navigate to my node projects wherever I have this file created. And then I call it node, let's see, Mongo crud, that's the folder I created. So I will move to that folder and inside this folder, I have the create.js. So now I can do node mon create.js. Save, and then I have the X, A, and B, which is coming from there. And I have a little trick here. If I do Control F12, I keep this window on top of the other windows. And if I make a change, so for example, now I take the X away and the B away, I save. And you can see how the letter A pop up automatically. This little thing here is called desk ping. So you guys can go and download it. And if you want to play with it, do it. And to set it, you do control plus F12. And to deset it, you do the exact same control plus F12. So you can have this window always on top of the other windows. A little bit of topic, but I think it's worth mentioning. 
So now that we're going to create, the first thing we need to do is we need to protect the system from a terrible crash. And I will show you what that means. If you have, let's create a variable, let's call it user. And let's see if the zooming is correct done for you guys, yeah. And this user variable will contain, let's say, a simple JSON object. This is going to be inserted, by the way, in Mongo in a second. We have the name and we have the last name. And the last name will be the letters AA. So if we console.log the user, save it, then we can see that the user pops up right there. So this is running as expected. The single quotes here and double quotes there, it doesn't matter, it's running as it should. So now I'm going to do console.log user.name and we should see the letter A down there. If we do last name, we will see AA. So this is running perfectly fine. If we say user.name dot, and now we're going to invent a new key. Let's say that we say one. We save and one is undefined and the system is running fine. But if we say one dot two, we save, and now you can see that the whole system just crashed. And this is what you have to avoid. There are so many tutorials out there in which they show you how to insert documents in Mongo or to do systems with Node.js, but mostly they never pay attention to this detail. If this object was coming from an API and it did contain the name and then the key one and then the key two inside the name, you will have no issues whatsoever. But if the API changes and then eventually they just send you the name without the key one and without the key two inside the name, then your system will crash. And once the system crashes, all your routes are down and the whole thing is down. You need to literally restart the servers manually or have a program that will restart the server. But when you restart the server, your sessions will be gone and the data that you had in RAM will be gone and you have a lot of issues. So we show you how you protect this first of all. So whenever you create a system, do the process.on and this takes two arguments, the uncaught exception, uncaught exception, and the second argument will be the error and the error message that you want. So that's the fat arrow or arrow function there. This takes an error. And let me just move this a little bit there. And it takes the data that comes with the error, if you had an error. So the only thing you need is to check if you have an error. We're just going to throw a little message to the console and then we'll just display critical error. But the server will not go down. The system will not go down. Critical error, yet system keeps running. And once you have this, the only thing left to do is you can just return it. You can also display the data that comes in there if that's what you want. So let's do that. In the next console, this is a little bit annoying, we just do that. Oh, we just console.log and then we will log data. Let's just save it. And now we can see that the error message has changed. It says we have a critical error, yet the system keeps on running and we had this on code exception with, with it's coming here in this data. So now the system just runs even though we have an error. If we do not have an error, obviously the system, now you can see I need to present to that just to wake it up again. I have the letter A. So now this is always going to be in our system. You don't need this part here. Instead of doing the console.log data, instead of doing this, you could send an email to the system administrator so the guy or girl, they can go and check it, right? All right, now that we have that, we go back into the connecting to the Mongo and inserting elements in our database. We can just leave that on top. 
but you can put it after you start importing. The usual standard is that now we need to import the Mongo client. So we're going to create a const. Let's call it Mongo client because that's what we're creating. We're going to connect as a client. And this will require simply the MongoDB that we installed. And we have to call the Mongo client function or property Mongo client. So that's the first line. Always save right away. I can get rid of this because we are not going to use this part. I save, you can see there are no mistakes, so everything is running as expected. Once we have the Mongo client, we need to actually, this is just the library that has been set inside Node.js now, and now we need to connect to Mongo. So if we need to connect to Mongo, we need to connect to the URL where Mongo is located. And this is the path, it's always mongodb colons forward slash forward slash and then in this case I'm using my own computer, so localhost port 27017 and then you do forward slash. There are several ways to connect to Mongo, I'm showing you one way which I consider to be probably the easiest, and then I will just have this there. Alright, save it again, you can see it just reloaded, there are no bugs. And we also need to have a variable that is going to be our database. So this is going to be let db, and for now let db is nothing. It could be an empty string, you can put a null on it, it doesn't really matter because we are going to override this in a second. So we have the database. Save again, always save, always run Nodemon and keep on saving it. If you have issues, by the way, guys, with Nodemon running it, in the PowerShell, let me just copy this message that I got before and paste it there. If you have issues with Nodemon because it doesn't want to run because you don't have the correct access rights, as an administrator, run this command in the PowerShell and then you can just type it or Google for it and that's the command what's highlighted. Set execution policy, remote, signed, and then you can run it. A side note, just in case that you need it. All right, so we have the database and now we need to connect to Mongo. So to do the connection, I'm going to just leave this process running there. And now we're going to say that the Mongo client is going to connect. Let's connect and this connect takes, for now two arguments, I want to trigger an error so you learn it. We're going to connect to the Mongo URL and what we get back is going to be inside this callback, which is the arrow function. This callback, as always in Node.js, the first argument is always the error, and then we're going to get the response. This response is coming from the database. So the response will contain the connection to the MongoDB. And let me just make sure that everything is running as expected. Yeah, it's fine, I don't see any box here. Yeah, here comes the first box, I saved. And as soon as I saved, you can see that I have a warning, a deprecation warning. It says that this connection is deprecated, and then I can see that to use the new server discover monitor engine, pass this option. You can see that this is a JSON object. I will copy this. I already copied by right-clicking on it. In some systems, systems you can do control C, you can just highlight it and right click on it as well, and that's copying it. And it doesn't tell you where to place it, but since I know a little bit about Node.js, I know this is an argument that's placed like, you could consider this as a middleware. So we put it right in there. And then we save again, and now we can see that the system is running fine. What we need to do now is we have to check if the error is present. So if we have an error, we are going to console.log and then we're just going to say database error. Or we can say error connecting to the database, up to, you, up to you, and then we're just going to return. Always return when you have an error like so. You can see that I don't have the error here, so I will just console.log the rest just so you can see what the response contains. As soon as I save, Norman took over, 
and you can see that the response contains a lot of data. I'm not going to walk you through all of these because it takes too long time, but you can imagine that you can read about it and then you can see everything about the connection. I'm connecting to a database name called test. I don't really know what test is coming from. I will show you that in a second. And then you have all these. All right. Let me just do this and like that. Great. So save again. And we don't need this console.log because it's annoying me. We do that. Great. So now we are going to tell the system which database we want to use. Right now, the rest variable is just the connection to the database. So we're going to tell it which database we want to run on. So we're going to create our DB. We're going to overwrite this variable DB. And that is going to be from the response. We want to use the database. And over here, we can invent whatever database we want. In the previous video, I show you how to create a database called company2. But now, just for you to see it, we're going to create a database and we will call it the company database, just so you see it. The company's database. So I will save this. This will restart the system automatically. I do not want to close this Nodmon terminal, so we open a new terminal and then I will show you how we check if the database has been created or not. So let's create a new command terminal. And if you remember from the previous video, I'm going to connect. You could use Compass, by the way, if you want it. You can just open Compass and check the databases, but I want to do this via the terminal for now. So CD. And we're going to go to program files and then I'm going to go to MongoDB server. I think it was version 4.2 and then the Bing folder. So inside this folder, you have the mongo.exe, which is the executable. So we just do mongo, click enter. So I'm connected to the database from this client. So if I say, I say show DBs, you can see that I have these databases I have been playing with. And at the moment, you do not see the company's DB. I will just ping it like so. So it's always going to be at the top. So I can run the commands to check the data because I don't have any other way to check it at the moment. So. The company's database has not been created. I save it again. You can see that it should be built. And then when I do show DBs, it's not there. The issue is because I am not putting any data into it. So Mongo doesn't bother in creating the database for us. So now we're going to put some data inside that database. I'm going to move this user object there. And what I will do now is just point to the collection and insert it. DB that is our variable. We are going to use a collection. Let's call it users. It doesn't matter how you call it. And then we're going to insert one. So this is a Mongo command. What we want to insert is the user. So we insert the user and it will give us a callback like node works on callbacks. So we'll say that the callback is going to be inside this arrow function. The callback takes the first argument to be an error and the second argument to be the response from the database. What the response contains, we don't know that at the moment. So we're going to check it. First, check if the error exists. So I just copy and paste. If the error, we're going to say cannot, in this case, error, cannot insert and then we're going to return. And if something went fine, which is going to console.log the response just to see what it contains. We save it, and now you can see that the response contains this, all this, that's the response. We don't need all of it. Actually, what is important for us is the ID that was returned in the response so we can use it for a later 
future and then we can check the insert count for example so before i just run those commands let me show you what the database contains now so we'll say show dbs and now you can see that the company's database has been created i'm going to use the company's database so i have switched the database and then we'll say db dot show collections i want to see all the collections inside this database let's see if i can run this command show collections no db two seconds guys all right um, sorry for that uh, the command is show collections and then you can see the users popping up. So we say db.users.find. We should see the newly created user with an MA with the last name AA. And you can see that the ID, which is that one, matches the ID that was returned in Nodemon. So this is how we insert elements in Nodemon. If you look at this inserted count, let's just play with it. As an example, I will just copy it by right clicking on it and then I will say res dot and then I will just pass the inserted count. Let's see if this runs. Save and then you can see that one element was inserted. So it's very good to know that every time you want to see what the object contains, you just lock the object and then when you log it, you can see all the data that you can use for the object, all the properties. These you can also check the inserted ID, for example. Let's do that. I select the inserted ID, and then I will put this in a nice message. I will just back tick it, and then I will say inserted ID, and then I will use this string literal, template literal, res dot inserted ID. Save it, and now you can see that the newest inserted ID ends in 7907. Let's select all the elements again. And then you can see 7907. So this is the way that you insert one element. In the future, we'll show you how you can insert multiple elements. But for now, this is enough. Quick sum up. This is very important. If the server goes down, always have this on so you prevent a total crash. If you have issues running the Nodemon command use this script in the PowerShell. All right, guys, if you have notified, if you have subscribed and you have notifications on, as soon as I create the more or newest videos, you will be always up to date with it. Thank you.